This is a really interesting story, and it's, and it's gonna it's gonna go by the wayside. Like when I'm watching Drikas all week, I'm looking at a guy who could be a star. All week I'm watching him. I'm watching the embedded shows. I watch how he walks into a hotel, walks up and greets Strickland. Where the last time he was face to face with Strickland, he was getting elbow dropped off the top of a chair after Gilbert Burns's kids shuffled to the left. The very next time he see, walks right up, he smiles, says hello. Brought his girl up. He knew there was no tension. He knew there was no heat. He saw the camera was there. He didn't know if Strickland's going to break bad on him and Bill. He doesn't know, but he still walked up. I mean, there's just there was something interesting about it. The energy was perfect. The greeting was perfect. The conversation was perfect. I mean, I've watched Drikas put in some very difficult situations. And I've watched him come out of it smelling like a rose. I mean, if you go back and you watch the video of Sean Strickland, give him a moonsault. Drikas is smiling. He's charismatic. He's handsome. He's not worked up at all. The only thing that he could have done to make that better was to then go take Sean Strickland's seats, which were two rows in front of him, and do a selfie on Instagram from there. That, that's the only thing that he could have done. Go back to the press conference where all of this stuff broke bad in the first place. You went back and you looked at these two and their body language and the look in their eyes and the craziness versus the smile. You would come away thinking Drikas was the good guy. Drikas started that whole thing and it was nasty. It was a nasty, terrible thing that Drikas said. But he came out of it smelling like roses, an interesting guy. He's, there's something to him. This is an undercard fighter 13 months ago. 13 months ago, this guy doesn't fight on TV. He is now the world champion who's being courted to main event the biggest mixed martial arts event of all time. He did that in 13 months. The A to Z on Duplicy is not a former Greco-Roman wrestler from South Africa that learned how to kickbox and got into some jujitsu classes. That's not the A to Z. 13 months ago, he was on the undercard. Nobody knew what a Drikas Duplessis was. Nobody knew. That's why they called him DDP. Not because DDP sounds cool. They didn't know how to say Drikas Duplessis. 13 months ago. And is now being offered a bout agreement that if he signs, will make him the last fighter to walk through the curtain on the biggest night in mixed martial arts history. That is a very fascinating thing. And the question is, what does he do now? How did we get here and what does he do now? And he did it all right in front of us. I mean, if you want to go study this and see what he did, he did it in front of all of us. And he went after a guy who wasn't even fighting. I mean, he, this all starts with Bo Nickel. Everything that upset Duplessis, Duplessis would have fought on the undercard on December 10th. He didn't care about that. He didn't care about his card placement. He cared that Bo was over him. He cared that Bo was debuting in the same weight class, had never done this before. The new guy, the younger guy, is going to come in and take a higher spot. How does that work? And I don't, and this is the, this is the part. See, this is the part that so many guys would have left off, but he didn't. I don't need you to take a chance from Bo. I'm not asking you to take something from Bo. Good for him. Just give me the same thing. Put me in there with Bo. And that, that changed everything. That changed how you look and how you listen to this, particularly at that time. Nobody was asking to fight Bo Nickel. Nobody is asked to fight Bo Nickel now. But we had a guy right there on the same night, licensed and preparing for the same event to weigh in the day before the same exact thing, saying, I'll fight him right now. Change the fight. And that changed the way people listened. Changed it greatly. And when I'm watching this guy that could be a star, it turns out that physically, from a fighting standpoint, he's a lot better than we thought he was. I mean, he told Sean Strickland what he was going to do to him. He told everybody, I'm going to, come, I'm going to take him down. I would just tell you, that's a really, really hard thing to do. Kamara Usman fought Sean Strickland. And Kamara got him down, but it was really hard to do. Kamara's a national champion. He's one of the greatest grapplers ever in the sport. He had a really hard time. It's a big claim by Duplessis. Being a good South African Greco-Roman wrestler versus being a national American folk-style champion. They're, they're, these aren't even close.
I've, I've compared Duplessis and Kamar Usman's wrestling resume. They're not even close. He said he was going to go out and take him down, and then he did. I mean, I'm just sharing for you. He's better than we knew. He pushed the pace on Strickland. He went forward. There was a time when Sean, boom, Sean connected hard. I believe it was in the third round. And the real question was, okay, who is Duplessis? Like, plenty of guys are good athletes. Plenty of guys can go out there and touch you up. Not plenty of guys. Are they fighters? And very seldomly is the answer yes in both categories. It doesn't need to be. You can be tougher than everybody to become world champion, or you can be better than everybody and become world champion. It's very rare that you're both. Give me an example of both. Would be John Jones. Somebody that is be physically is better, but also when the going gets tough, he's still going to be here. At any rate, boom, Strickland touches him. Two plus C, you could see it. He was, oh, he wanted to get those back. Came right up, 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 and they missed, but he was coming at him. But now we have our answer. We have our answer that we got a really good athlete that's also a fighter. And the question is, where does he go now? I mean, we're watching him and watching and seeing what he could do. No, but he's not the biggest star in the sport, guys, but he's right here. The biggest star in our sport has come down in the last 13 months. 13 months ago, Conor McGregor, who is the, is the sport's biggest star, Conor McGregor was the biggest star then. There was a big gap. Conor's come down. He's still the biggest star. But I just, I just want you to juxtapose that. With Duplessis, was way down here. And in 13 months, he rised. He rised a factor of tenfold. Well, the biggest star actually went down. So nobody, this is without exaggeration, has come as far in 13 months as Duplessis. If he does that again, he will surpass Red Panty Night. In the next 13 months, Duplessis makes up the ground that he did in these last 13 months. He becomes the sport's biggest star. So what does he do now? And I would never judge him immediately after a fight. I must critique him because it's all that I got. He's only spoken one time and it was right after a fight. Right? I'm sure he was high. That adrenaline and that excitement, and these are things that I dreamed of. I got high plenty of times in the sport, and I never reached that. I can only imagine. So you wouldn't want to judge a guy, but I'm just telling you. Went to the post-fight press conference. The fight between him and Izzy is the hottest fight and the hottest feud our sport has ever seen. It only lasted 11 days. Those 11 days of that feud is hotter than anything anybody else has brought you. And Duplessis got asked about it, and he said it's not personal. He said it's not personal at all. And I wish he wanted of. I wish he wanted of. And I think he misspoke. It is personal. Of course it's personal. But I think he misspoke. It worries me that he did it. It worries me that he meant it. Because if he meant it, then he doesn't understand this game like I thought he did. If he meant it, then he's one of the few or one of the normal guys that think the punches and kicks are enough, or he thinks the punches and kicks sell, and they don't. They don't. The story sells. Nothing else. Just a story. There was mixed martial arts fights all over the country this weekend. None of them got discussed, except the one that was on TV, and it got to TV because its story was better. Punches and kicks and the unified had nothing to do with it. And it worried me. When he said that my beef with Adesanya is not personal, it's never been personal, it will never be personal, it worried me. Was he just being nice because everything was great because he was high? I hope so. I hope so. But what Duplessis does now, if you're a star, you start calling shots. If you're not ready for that, if that's just not quite who you are, you'll get told what to do. And you can be a main event either way. You can be rich either way. You can be world champion either way. You can build a legacy either way. But there's a difference. And I'm not saying that Duplessis go behind the scenes and he starts being a jerk to Dana, points the gun on him, tells him what he's going to do. I'm not saying that. I'm saying he calculates and tactically figures out what Dana's going to ask him to do, but then he's the one that says it first. That's what I'm suggesting. That when then he's at a press conference and they bring up, who he's going to fight next? Is it going to be Izzy? Yeah, it might be Izzy, you know, whoever, what, what, what they want me to do. That's a very big difference in how Conor McGregor would have handled that. Conor would have guessed what they were going to ask him to do, and he would have said, here's what I'm going to do. And the other way to go, if you don't know to do that, is to dismiss whatever the idea is. Well, if fight Izzy, I would never call him a fight the guy that lost to the guy that I just stomped. You have to be kidding me. I would never call him out. He can come chase me, call me out. 
Maybe we'll see him down the road. I'm not going to challenge a guy that lost to a guy that I just, what do you think, I'm a bully? And just, that would be another way that a star would handle that. But it seemed like a toss-up. It seemed like whatever. It seemed like it doesn't matter. And again, I'm judging a guy who's at a very different time, but it's, it's all that I have. It's all that I have. And if he thinks that him versus Izzy, any of us want to see it, for any reason other than it's extremely personal, he's wrong. And he's not going to have the gates, and he's not going to have the box office, and he's not going to move the merchandise. He's not going to get the power in the video game, and he's not going to be eligible for the cover. All things that are currently on the table. If Duplessis does, in the next 13 months, what he just did, he is the sport's biggest star. If he takes the mantra that he did at the post-fight press conference of, I don't care, then he won't be. And the time to choose that and the time to decide where you are and who you are is right now.